Hello everyone, uh, I'm Rani and this is the New Nordic Way podcast. Uh, welcome here to the amazing Finnmark production studio up here at Nothing Hill in Kyrkenes. I'm sitting here together with Patrick Hamilton Walsh. How are you doing? I'm very well and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you, Rani. It's a pleasure to have you. I've been waiting actually for a long, long time for us to have this uh, episode. So thankfully we got to sit down now today. Uh, I think some of the followers might not know uh, who you are. So could you just give like a brief introduction? Who is Patrick? Very brief introduction is I'm a backpacker. I'm an author. I'm a keynote speaker. Um, my background is in I'm an accountant and a lawyer. And I have found my way to the Nordics and into the the Arctic region of, of, of Oslo in particularly because I have a passion for talent, a passion for people, but ultimately a passion for the Nordics. Actually, I really have feel like a, this is a place where I have found a really great tribe of people and I, I found a lot of p- potential to, to sort of fulfill some of the goals that I have. And the thing that I like most about the region is that it's actually a place where I think a lot of people can actually come here and, and get involved in the region and, and find their niche and their carve out a place for themselves in the world. Yeah, not putting you to uh, bash your home Ireland, but uh, why why is the Nordics better than that, or can you even say that it's better? I I I, I don't really compare things like better or worse. I think that it, it depends on the stage that you're at in life. So whenever I was the head of talent for the city of Stockholm, I was able to ca- carve out a niche for us where we would build talent bridges between certain cities and certain regions where we could actually, um, for, let's say London, for example. Mm. London is almost the center of the world, but it's also uh, a young person's town. So if you go there as a student in your late teens, early 20s, and you, you get involved in the great ecosystem that London has, the sort of work hard, play hard environment that it is, I think that eventually that spits you out. And you get to a stage in your life where you want to have, you want to have your cake and you want to eat it. You can have the you can work hard you can but you can also have the career you can have the holidays and i think it's particularly a great place for families and for this stage of my life that i'm in i think it's the best place in the world and so whenever i was building these models for people to come from around the world to to live and work in a fantastic place but work on fantastic projects as well which are market leading in many regards i feel that the nordics is the best place in that if you're over 28 and you're thinking about having a family or you have got a family. Um, And I'm biased, but I also have been to 145 countries in the world. So I also have a lot of reference points. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you're out there, you're listening to this and the Nordics is appealing to you and you're, you know, coming to, you know, your late 20s, early 30s, into your 40s, I believe there's no better place in the world from from which to have that that stage of your career. Super interesting. And... Even though I'm from the Nordics, I started to feel the same things. Mm-hmm. And now that I'm looking forward to actually starting my own family, maybe uh, hopefully in the incoming years, uh, this is the place where I want to mm-hmm. do it. And also got to be privileged to travel a lot. And no place is like this place, but of course it's home for me, but beautiful to see that it's home for you as well. Yeah, but I mean, someone like yourself, the fact that you have so much p- possibility and so much potential to do a lot of things around the world. Obviously, you're you're a guy that's high in demand because of how you, how you are and what you've carved out for yourself. The fact that you find enough here to do still is almost the other compliment. You know, you're like, okay, there is London, there is Silicon Valley, there's Sydney, there's Singapore. But you know what? Helsinki is awesome also. And so is Tallinn, so is Stockholm, so is Kirkenes, you know, Copenhagen. Each of those places are very different. And it's a point that I would like to sort of get the viewers and listeners to understand is that the Nordics are very, very different depending on where you go. Like each of the cities has their own ecosystem, their own vibe, their own uh, essence of, and they're all good at different things. And there's a lot of quirkiness between them. And I think the longer I live in the region and the more I'm exposed to the region, the more I realize actually if Stockholm is not for you, it doesn't mean that the Nordics isn't for you. You know, maybe you have you find your tribe in somewhere like Yotabori or Olu or somewhere smaller or somewhere more to the east, west, north, south. There's a lot of possibilities here, and there's a there's a lot that you can do to find yourself. Yeah, as I was working with this ambitious Africa project before that we've been also talking a lot about, and you know, starting from the point of view that Africa is one place to the realization <laughs> that it's 54 countries. 
so different from each other. And that also, I think, made me realize that it's the same here. Like, 100 kilometers is actually a far journey to travel even here mm -hmm. in, in, in the north. There's a lot of change yeah. in 100 kilometers. If you go from, say, uh, Helsinki to Tampere or from Stockholm to Uppsala, very, very different ecosystems. Yeah. Uh, and it's one of the things that I actually like about it is I, I, f I have different tribes of people depending on where I go. Like my, the, my friends that live in Helsinki are very different and the conversations are very different mm -hmm. from the friends I would have in Oslo or Copenhagen or Stockholm, for example. And they're all just on a line straight across. Yeah. So imagine what happens as you go, start to go a bit more north and understand the sort of freedoms and things that are important in, in that region. And, and I think one of the things that me and you probably are a bit spoiled about is, is our possibility to travel, live and work across the entire region and sort of extract the best from it in, in, in those ways and obviously contribute as well when we go there. You know, whether we're right here on the very top of Norway on the border with Russia on the coast of the Atlantic Sea or when we're right down in Copenhagen last week you were there at Tech Barbecue. So there's a lot of possibility between those within that space. And the movement is really easy here. I actually started to talk now about the location we're at, like uh, Shirkenes, a beautiful, beautiful place mm -hmm. here in the most northernmost corner of, of uh, uh, the Nordics, but also probably of EU, if you mm -hmm. can count Norway to be a, a EU country or EU uh, residence in one way or another. But uh, what here has been one of the core issues I've been actually seeing throughout the years is this wrongness of perception, maybe also links a bit to what we were talking just before about, but the problem that what the local people see here, uh, they don't see the benefits and the strengths, uh, what is actually making this place uh, shine. And that's also a bit the same thing I've had, uh, been realizing with the New Nordic Way, is that uh, people here in the Nordics, they don't really see how strong the way uh, of our culture and working is. So uh, how would you define the New Nordic Way from someone coming from the outside? I believe the New Nordic Way is something that provides opportunity for everyone as long as they're willing to understand that this is a different type type of world than, than everywhere else the nordics are globally world famous mm -hmm. wherever you go I, my wife is swedish so i i do have this first so ev wherever we go in the world and we have been she's been to over 100 countries she just has to say she's from sweden or from the nordics and people light up because there's a feel-good factor that comes with being from the Nordics. And what the Nordics have tried, well, not what they have succeeded in doing very well, is taking that feel-good factor with, that came from being fishermen and foresters and different things like that over the years. And they've completely upgraded it to become the most forward-thinking people in so many modern industries, from health techs to uh, funding to you know all these micro sort of niches. And one of the things that I have realized, and I talk a lot about this in my new book as well, about is how do these people from the Nordics get there first continually? It doesn't like so it doesn't matter if it's Spotify or if it's Kahoot or if it's, you know, Carlsberg down in, you know, uh, Copenhagen. There's something about this region where there's an openness to embracing the new and let, allowing people to take chances. And I think the thing that's probably new Nordic about it is that now for the first time, more and more international people with other, a lot of other opportunities are actually coming here and learning about it. I think it's only new to us. I think for you guys, you have, you have almost been brought up with this as, you, as you, from your grandparents, your parents and all going, go ahead, take an opportunity, take a risk. It may work out, it may not. And if it doesn't work out, give it a go again. And because there's such a good foundation both of uh, within the society here, but also of a foundation of excellence, both from sports to business to everything else in between. There is a belief that you can be the best in the world if you do the right things in the right order. Yeah. And it's very accessible. Like I have met many royal family members in Sweden. I've met many movie stars and, you know, across the Nordics and across this region. People are very accessible. And therefore, it's very easy to see how normal people have done exceptional things. And we don't get that same opportunity in the UK, Ireland, Australia, places like that, because those people are almost more heading away. Whereas here, it's almost like the new thing that's about the new Nordics is that 
to you guys it's the Nordics to us it's the possibility of that we can be part of it well that's <laughs> you pretty much like took all the different elements that I've been looking at analyzing that it's actually going to be a book uh, we need to sit down and write it because you have the expertise and the ideas just around that is beautiful so we would need to work on that even more mm. but I, I agree with the take that you're doing there and it's also something the further up north you come the more you also start to realize how needed all of that is because here you don't have the same amount of people the same amount of resources that we have down south so people that can pretty easily like play around with things and utilize those values that you were mentioning but the issue i think up here north is that uh, when you don't have the critical mass of people uh, what the issue then becomes is that where do you find the talents to do that? And yeah. Talent attraction is something you've been also working a lot on. So yeah, it's well, there's there's one thing that b became very relevant to me. I was building, uh, but, uh, which is known as Talent Bridges, and in the very start of that, we had an idea where we were going to share talent with Israel, and we were going to set up a tech kibbutz. And these were these relationships went back, and these discussions went back to before the the pandemic, where we would send young Swedish talent down to Israel. And we would take young Israeli talent and bring them to bring them to the Nordics. And and how we tried to sell that to the Swedes was okay. You're going to get down. You're going to learn from this great innovative ecosystem that Israel and Tel Aviv have developed, mm -hmm. and salaries are quite high and it's sunshine. And you know it it was a really good sell for the for the Swedish kids. However, the other way around wasn't such a good sell because they we told them okay, you don't need to just come to Sweden. But what you can do is you can spend six months in the in, in the south of the Nordics, six months in the middle of the Nordics, and six months at the t at the top in the Arctic region. And the thing that really stood out to me was the fact that these young, brilliant people who have again all these possibilities to travel and live and work everywhere, it was the north that actually appealed most to them. Hmm. Spending eighteen months in the Arctic region where they can go dog sleighing, see the northern lights, climb up frozen waterfalls, you know, twenty four hours of sunlight during the summer and all the power days and possibilities that comes with that and this is where i think there's a disconnect between where the nordics see their value and where the world sees the value because it, this is a very exotic place to me and and that's after traveling all the world and therefore you can imagine how exotic it is to people who are you know have grew up in the same town or same city and they've probably been to spain for their holidays to come here and see the openness and the welcome that's available but also to do things like go on a dog sleigh, yeah. to go king crab fishing, you know, and, and things like that, and do it for 18 months is just phenomenal. And it's not just, just only the exotic uh, like things you can do, but actually the exotic opportunities also that the region has to offer when it comes to work and life and work-life balance. Very accessible. Yeah. That's the thing. Like I was talking to one of the guys last time we were here on the way back to the airport. And he told me his wife was just literally at the side of the water and she just lifted out a king crab with her hand. And these things are like leg, leg, edge to edge, like <laughs> yeah, two meters huge. long. And, uh, and I was like, is that how you... She was that... And I was like, wow. Yeah. And they to the, the thing, the way he told it to me was as if I had misunderstood it. Like, yeah, I just lifted it in. And I was like, no, but did you say your wife just picked it out of the water? No, she literally just leaned over and picked it out as we were talking and it was there. And I thought... For me, it's a good, it's a good analogy as to the possib the richness and the possibility and the access to richness that exists across the the Nordics, and I I think there's an element too of this which which people don't really understand. I, I, about ten or twelve years ago, I went in. I did a road trip from um, Tallinn through Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania down through those three nations and the thing that stood out to me then with my my then Swedish girlfriend was that actually these people are Nordic people as well yep. it's just that they got trapped behind the wrong side of the iron <laughs> curtain for a, for a generation yeah but and, and, and I have been proven right in the last five six seven years because the innovation the drive the possibility that exists within the Nordic spirit has popped out in those three countries as well. Crazy. I'm like, like you look at Estonia, what they did with like the, the E visa and the Estonia sort of narrative and how they've actually not just seen it as a, as a, you know, a thing to sort of hold up as a marketing, but literally have followed it through. Yeah. It's this region has got, is the highest um, per capita when it comes to unicorns, highest per capita when it comes to funding, highest per capita when it comes to possibility then, hmm. because the funding is available. And there's, there's people around you at all, every turn who have done it before, who have experience of others doing it, 
and these people are open and willing to ask questions. We have mutual friends, Peter and Kusta, and, and you look at some of the work they have done from uh, been back in the days of Hewlett Packard, right through to Angry Birds, right through to now building a tunnel that leads, you know, from from Helsinki right through to Tallinn, yeah. and and that can I think of how that how that opens up the entire region, and the possibilities physically, financially, you know, just psychologically, they come with being so close to two capital cities within a, within a train ride. Yeah. And the crazy part is that I think when you talk about the Nordics or now that we're talking about the new Nordics, people like cap it down to a region. And I think it's like region is not where the borders go. It's actually where the mindsets go. So where do you find the like-minded people thinking, mm. working, acting the same way? And uh, this uh, whole podcast show and the newsletter and the uh, content creation we're now doing around this is all about like having these uh, discussions with you, with other people from uh, this continent and this discussion here is just a scratch of the surface, so I can't wait for the next time when we actually get to sit down and, and deep dive into a certain topic. But my last thing that I wanted to kind of like ask from you, because now you kind of like laid the groundwork out there and showcased, especially from an outward perspective and from a global perspective, what sets us apart. So in your opinion, where do we go from here? What should we consider? What should we do better? Uh, who should I maybe talk with next time so that we could actually get people to see both here locally, but then also globally, what the new Nordic way is actually about and how do you implement that as a part of your everyday life? Yeah, I, I, the, the biggest criticism I have of the Nordics is their inability to see how exceptional they are, both as a people, but also as a region. Hmm. And it's almost like they think that they, you know, oh, we've done this and we did that and that's enough. I would like, we're living in a very noisy world. And there's a lot of noise and a lot of bluster being promoted of things that don't stack up at all to this region and to the people here. I would actually like to see the region become a bit, a little bit more cocksure and have the podcast like this, have the books written and, and start to actually project themselves to the world with a little bit more authority. Because the products and services and people and sports people that they project to the world are all about doing it the best way, the right way. And I think our world is moving towards the Nordics. I think this is the zeitgeist. We have the possibility here to, you know, have the good healthcare systems, have the great infrastructure, the great networks for underground metros and trains and motorways. It's all there. And it was all put in by your grandparents. Yeah. They had done the hard work. So now it's almost like we have done, the, they have done the, the measure of the hard work. Now we just have to add the cherries on top, which is by being innovative, by co-creating, by coming together and being open and welcoming to people from around the world. So I, I think that the thing that we need is we need more Ronnies. <laughs> we need people who are on the European stage, on the world stage, talking about what the Nordic stands for, what the new Nordics means and what its foundations are. Because it's only through that, by people being exposed to uh, living, working examples of, of what the Nordic stands for, which is its people, then, then they'll understand it a bit better. And at the same time, one of the things I used to do when I was head of talent at the city of Stockholm was I used to, I believe that a big part of my role was actually selling Sweden back to the Swedes, letting them see from an outsider's eyes, damn, look what you have got. This place is awesome. And letting them realize, actually, you know, the rest of the world doesn't have... <laughs> these things and that you should actually be a bit more proud of who you are on that because it's like everything whenever you're in an ecosystem which is highly advanced people see the cracks yeah. they don't, and they focus on the cracks exactly. how can we make it better but sometimes you have to see the big the big picture and uh, I, I, I think that's the one thing I would like to see is more Ronnies more people out there banging the drum Peter Vest Nick Peters and Ronnies and Kustas talking about the Nordics but also Talking about it as a unified force. I, I was in Slush uh, 18 months ago, I guess, and they asked me to do a panel. And I said, I'll do a panel, but let's do it as a Nordic panel. I want to have somebody from a, from a, a, a company across Norway, Finland, Sweden, and Denmark. And we sat down and we talked about talent because I believe I want to attract talent to the mm. Nordics. And that doesn't mean I want to attract them to one particular city. There's certain people who will want to come to the, to the Arctic there's other people who will love the, the vibe that comes along with being cool in Helsinki. Other people will love the madness of Copenhagen. And depending on where you are in the region, you will probably find your tribe in, in some regard. Because these cities offer a lot. 
and also the access that you will have from those cities to nature, to the sea, to um, the world as well. Highly connected. We have we have Fenair, we have Norwegian, we have uh, SAS, all operating wonderful new carriers going to every corner of the world at very reasonable prices. And now you're taking you can take trains overnight from Stockholm into uh, Berlin. Yeah. Very accessible, but also very welcoming. So we're a bit distant, but still connected. Thank you, Patrick, for always lifting me up. Like I think that's one of the special skills that you are actually sitting on is how do you actually make other people shine? And, and that's something you're really good at. And I think that's what we actually need here in the New Nordic. We need to find a way how to make the young talent base we have actually shine and actually be seen and heard mm. because they sit on a lot of knowledge, a lot of expertise crazy amounts that I didn't even know when I was a bit younger because there is just so much information and the Nordics are really good at also making that information accessible mm. both in school and then outside of that. If the last thing uh, you would drop is what is your one-liner or one thought or uh, one tip uh, that has uh, built upon you here in the Nordics, something that you've learned here mm. that you would not change for anything anymore? Uh, really, I like. I really like that question because it's something that nobody really asks me, and it's something that I've been really successful at in the Nordics and and across the multiple countries. And I think it's that your network is your net worth. And I think a lot of people come to the Nordics expecting a free hug signs at the airport where everyone's <laughs> going to run out and embrace you. And don't forget, the, it, it's a re, it's a functioning society. You have to you have to come in with a with a giving approach where you want to give people you want to help people you want to contribute and you will find that the people here respond so well to givers mm. exceptionally well to people who want to contribute and enhance the environment and so and I, i've already mentioned your grandparents once and i'll mention them again in this region whenever i'm working on a project which is in, deep in my mind i'm always thinking i'm doing this for your grandparents because again, they were the people who built the society for us. They did all the hard work, and all we have to do is maintain it and put the cherries on top by making the, the, the new level. And, and I look at myself as an immigrant to the society. I look at myself as a custodian of the great society that your grandparents have left for people like me to come in and feel welcome and, and things like that. And now you have to make sure that the world is better for our grandkids or as good as we received from them. And so the thing I would leave to people is come in and give and you will build a network very quickly and yeah. you will also build your net worth very quickly yeah. it, just as a response of being here. So come in and give. Yeah. I really love that. That's weird. At Hunken we also have this golden rule. So always leave the place in better shape than you found it. Mm. And I think that's also, we can't just like enjoy what has been built here, but we actually need also to improve it and make it better because there will be people coming after us and they want to get the next level of things. So mm. if we get too used to it, that things are good and things are okay, then they won't hold off uh, for forever. Patrick, it's been a pleasure. Uh, can't wait for us to sit down, hopefully in Helsinki or Stockholm probably in the near month, maybe deep dive into a certain concept. If someone uh, in the audience has actually something they would like to hear us talk or deep dive in, we're super happy to do that. Yeah, please. Last a shout out to these amazing guys here, the whole Finnmark Productions team. Like, you're wonderful, uh, always helpful. If you ever need actually <clears throat> any uh, videography, photography, uh, a podcast help here up in the far north, these are the guys to contact. So Yeah, next level. But again, these the guys at Finnmark Productions are an example of what it is to create something out of nothing. Mm. Their their ability to have some of the biggest movies coming through the world at the moment, and they're the guys who are running the marketing and all for it. So it just goes to show you, even though they're at the, in the Arctic, if the quality is there, the people will find you. Yeah, we have the festival also coming up actually in January 11th and 12th. So you actually can come here and experience the whole place. Me and Patrick will be here. Filmmark Productions will be here. So take that opportunity. I will drop the link somewhere in the comment section or so on. Cool. Patrick, a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you Kitos. for taking the time. Kiitos. Thanks, brother.